Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, and participants. My name is Mrinalini Rai, an indigenous woman from South Asia. On April 25th, the first earthquake hit Nepal with a devastating magnitude of 7.4, killing thousands of people and affecting millions, and in its wake, leaving a stream of devastation that has shaken the country at its core from the capital to the laps of the Himalayas. Even as we speak, the ground under my family, friends, colleagues, and people of Nepal still shakes. And just when we were picking up the pieces, the second earthquake hit on May 10th. My 10-year-old Tunisa tell me, my legs feel like jelly when I talk to them over the phone. I laugh at them for a moment before I realize the fragile and unpredictable situation they are in, and I feel helpless. And my mother, who is currently homeless, and taking shelter in a tent in a school ground because the apartment she lived in now is certified unsafe. Today, I take the space to bring to your doorsteps this piece of reality from outside of this UN premises. This is just one small narrative, and there are numerous others that I cannot do justice to do in the short time. Where do I start? The personal experiences of 10-year-olds camping out in tents, the young mothers and the new generation born in open fields, the hundreds of migrant workers overseas in grim condition who are unable to make it home to attend the last rituals of the families they have lost. These are small but essential pieces that must inform the new model of development we all seek. And within these narratives, the most affected are often girls and women of all ages. Women are not inherently vulnerable, but legal and cultural right realities often mean they are marginalized in practice and therefore part of vulnerable groups. In Nepal, in a recent report of the UNFPA, it estimates that some two million women and girls of reproductive age are most those affected by the recent earthquake, including some 126,000 pregnant women. Over the past month of the post-2015 negotiations, I have heard much about addressing poverty and leaving no one behind. The declaration holds the key to setting the stage, and the principle needs to be, needs to be and the realization of the post-2015 development agenda, which should be built on a universal, holistic, just, transformative approach to sustainable development to shift the existing development paradigm to lasting structural reform. The Women's Major Group has some proposals, which I share with you here, responding to the three guiding questions. First, we were asked how to frame a visionary and ambitious sustainable development agenda. I highlight six points. It should clearly prioritize protection of, respect for, and fulfillment of universal human rights, fundamental freedoms, the rule of law and good governance, and the implementation of human rights approaches to development. Ensure equality and non-discrimination with re reducing inequalities as an overarching objective for all goals and targets. Include a specific paragraph in the declaration that focuses on the achievement of gender equality and women's empowerment with express reference to the human rights of women and girls given that sustainable development cannot be achieved without it. Ensure ecological justice to protect biodiversity, address the multidimensional crisis of climate change, and promote living within planetary boundaries. Ensure intergenerational justice to safeguard the well-being of future generations and of our planet. Affirm all Rio principles set out in 1992, including the principles of people-centered development and common but differentiated responsibilities. On the second, on how to inspire governments and all stakeholders, we should, the declaration should paint a picture of the world with access to justice for all, sustained peace, equality, the autonomy of people, and not just the preservation of, but the flourishing of the planet and identify the pathways to get there through economic models and development approaches that are firmly rooted in the principle of human rights and environmental sustainability that address inequalities between people and state and that rebalance power relations, including 
through inclusive and equitable trade regimes. Clearly recognize the contribution and inherent value of traditional and indigenous knowledge, innovation and practices, as well as those of women, migrants, and others whose voices are often muted. Reiterate a commitment to the global partnership and full range of means of implementation, including allocation of adequate international and domestic resources. And it also to realize the gains that have been made as a result of global corporations and focus at national level, including those by civil society and organized constituencies. Also, very important to have a strong review, follow-up, and accountability with the human rights framework that is cross-cutting and includes all those responsible, including delegates, countries, stakeholders, everyone. On the third, on how to look at sustainable development and targets to be featured in this declaration, we suggest SDGs must be referred as a full package of 17 goals and 169 targets. Simplifying the SDGs into groups of goals for communication purposes could obscure the overall picture and inhi inhibit true ownership. Address the multiple dimensions of poverty and discrimination, and for that, it is a must that we have a disintegrated data. This hearing is taking place at an opportune moment as a zero draft of the summit outcome document will be issued at the end of this month. We hope that our proposal will just not be a summary for reference, but rather a motivation for everyone present here to be an example of good leadership and putting promises into real action. Human rights and gender equality have to be at the core of the political declaration. As the Secretary General stated, this is a century of women. We will not realize our full potential in half of humanity continues to be held back. We call on all governments of the world to set an example of leadership forward. I'm sure we all agree this is important and unprecedented, business at hand. But as we work together to set the post-2015 agenda in motion, we must all work to ensure it is not business as usual, but rather business unusual. Thank you.